I seen a video by um, life coach or relationship coach, uh, Rebecca Lamb Pope. And I thought it was very encouraging because she talked about how she remarried um, and her story is very interesting was watching her video. And I said, well, let me do my video. Let me talk about my my um, journey into remarrying at 40 years old. And I'm doing this video, too, to encourage people who might have been through a divorce or you might be, you know, maybe 35, a little older, and you, you haven't really found true love. You've been through some relationships. You've been with some people, and it just never really panned out. And I just want to give you hope. And this is why I'm doing this video, because if I can go through a divorce after 15 years of marriage and then be able to remarry in six months uh, off of someone I met on Instagram, um, I'm hoping that this video will be able to encourage you. So the journey goes going through my divorce, uh, my 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 ex-wife and I were, were separated and. I'm on my own and I'm trying to rebuild. And uh, it's just a tough time. I mean, I was going back and forth with trying to get full custody of my daughter. Uh, she was 14 at the time. So, you know, she's dealing with a lot as a teenager. And I had to pay child support for a year. I had to pay alimony for a year. I thought alimony was just for rich people. I didn't know it was for everyday people like me too. I said, dad, I got to pay alimony too. But when I was talking to the lawyer and about the alimony and stuff like that, you know, my thing was, I said, I'll pay the child support. I'll pay the alimony. I was at a place in my life where I just wanted peace. Are you tired of dating the same person, just different faces? Are you tired of people wasting your time in this whole dating process? Do you desire to marry one day? I created this five-part video series entitled Dating Intentionally, Five Ways to Know They Are the One for You. You can get it now in the comments section below. You will see it is five, the number five, ways to know that podia com. I created this five-part video series with you in mind. Now let's get back into today's podcast episode. That was my thing. I wanted to have my own peace of mind. I wanted to start my own life over. I was willing to pay whatever just to make sure that I can start to relive my own life at 40. And of course, there was a little trepidation in that because I'm thinking, dang, I'm 40 years old, going through this divorce. I know I still wanted to remarry. I knew I still had, uh, I, know I, I knew I wanted to remarry eventually. I knew I still had love in my heart. I wasn't dead yet. Um, and I just, I, I felt like I wanted to do this again because I knew where I went wrong. And I had that self-actualization where, oh, this is where I screwed up at. And even had to talk with my ex-wife about where did I suck, you know? And she was honest with me. And a lot of that stuff came with me being emotionally immature, um, with me not having, uh, not being able to express my feelings, right? The way that I should and letting her know what's going on in my world. Stonewalling, you know, where I'm at a place where I'm just not saying anything, withholding love just because we fell out. Like those immature things, you know, she played her part too. Don't get me wrong. There were some issues that she had too, but I'm talking about my own personal faults where I realized that these are areas I need to tighten up in my own life. And I would like to say to someone who's going through a divorce or someone who want, who want love again, just take accountability. I believe your healing process, it, it goes faster when you actually deal with your own personal issues. You heal faster when you deal with your own issues first. And you say, this is where I sucked. This is where I need to mature. This, when you do those things, I believe that healing, it, it happens so fast. And you possibly even find someone else because you held yourself accountable and you went and got the necessary help that you needed and to work on yourself. Too many people spend a lot of time blaming other people, saying if it wasn't for her, if it wasn't for him, and that stuff, it, it just, it doesn't help you in the long run because you end up dating more people in hopes of 
it's not me, but it's just other people. So you're just trying to find this quote unquote right person when you're not really working on yourself. Uh, and then you end up hurting other people in the process because you think it's all about other people. And, you know, I'm perfect. I don't have any issues. It's these people I'm dating. No, you got some issues too. Anyway, I'm getting off track. So <laughs> I go through this, you know, going through this divorce and I'm waiting for my ex-wife to sign these divorce papers and, and that's taking forever. And I'm spending Lord knows how much money on trying to get this paperwork done and just trying to move forward because I initiated the divorce. I did. And there was a time in my life where I held on to my marriage too long because I was in fear of, oh my God, like God is not going to bless me after this. And he's going to hold me accountable to this. And, you know, God hates divorce and, and all these different things. And just my whole church background, right? Going through that whole mental thought process and no, no shade to the church. I'm, I'm just saying, but I, I was, I was in fear of that. So I stayed on to my, I hung on to my marriage longer than, than what I needed to, because if I had the courage and the boldness to do it, I would have ended the marriage earlier because we were married 15 years, you know? So going through this whole process, um, I'm, I'm, I'm on my own. I'm starting over. And, um, I eventually end up getting my daughter full time, you know? So to dads out there, I will say that there is a possibility that you can get your child. If you're going through that there, don't lose hope because I've been there myself and you can get custody of your kids. If that's what you desire and you show that you are willing and able and that you can provide for them, there will be some favor for you. So one day I'm on Instagram, I'm scrolling. And, uh, um, and now the funny thing about this with, with my wife now is we were friends on Instagram and I'm throwing on my air quotes, but it was just like, we were just somebody who followed each other, you know, that whole kind of thing. Um, because she was connected to a life coach that I was connected to. So it was like people you might like, because they like that coach. So I was like, okay, well, we're both following this person. So I'll follow as well. So that's how we end up following each other. And it was a picture I saw of her one day and I said, I need to talk to her. I said, I need to just, I need to shoot my shot, you know? And the thing I loved about her was I was scrolling through her Instagram pictures because I'm thinking, oh my God, okay, I hope there's no crazy freak pictures on here and teach his own. If that's what you do, it's what you do. Uh, you know, no booty hanging over the sink or anything of that nature. So I said, okay. So the pictures that she had on there, they were classy. They were pictures of her and her son and just her in life, you know, her just living. And I was just like, oh, okay, okay. So I'm scrolling and I'm liking more pictures, you know, going down. I'm liking pictures three, four years ago, you know, so uh, I end up sliding in the DM and that's how we end up talking. And I gave her my number and she was like, you know, let's talk in person because she was talking about how the old DM thing. And I was like, you know what? Okay, that's right. Yeah. I gave her my number. We exchanged numbers. We started talking and eventually we end up getting on Skype and shout out to Skype because I know that's kind of old school now, but we got on Skype and we started talking. And the beautiful thing about this was our conversation, our conversations were so dope and I'm 12 years older than her and, but her parents were old school. So she kind of have like an old soul. So even though I'm older, she still has that old soul. So there was a lot of things we were able to converse about. We, we read books together. We prayed together. Um, we just talked about personal issues. Like we just really, really clicked. Uh, we had Bible studies and, and praying with each other. And she, she told me that I was the first man that ever actually covered her in prayer, like specifically for her. And I was just thinking like, man, how many women out here who's never had the experience of a man covering them in prayer? I'm like, wow, you don't, don't, don't cheat yourself. You know, if I'm going to be your protector. I'm going to protect you spiritually as well. So that, those were some things that we did that just kept our relationship fresh. The communication was great. It was just like we texting each other. OK, I'm on break. You on break. All right. Let me call you. I got a 15 minute break. Let's talk. OK, you on the road. You know, you got some time you're away from the kids. OK, let's talk like these whole kind of things. And just going through that whole process with her just made me like her even more because we we gave each other our time. And I tell people all the time that 
if somebody want to be with you, they're going to, I don't care what they got going on. They're going to give you that necessary time. People, oh, I work these crazy hours. I don't have time. Look, if you really want that person, especially, you know, with guys, we're going to make sure that we put that time in. And the feelings had to be mutual because I told her, I, you know, I wanted to remarry eventually and she wanted to marry. So I tell single people too, have you had the conversation with this person that do they even want marriage? Just because you're in a relationship with someone doesn't mean that they want marriage. They just like, I don't, I don't even want to get married. I just want us to just kick it and, and be in a relationship. And if it don't work, we'll keep it moving. So those were some things that we had in common, you know, and I remember seeing her um, on Labor Day weekend. I actually caught a flight to go see her. And uh, this is the, the first time that I actually took a flight to, you know, go see somebody that was out of state. And I went to go see her for the first time because I was like, oh, man, she's dope on Skype. Like we had these dope, amazing conversations. I'm like, we got to take this a step further. I need to see you in person. I need to know if you're this dope person in real life that you are, you know, on, on screen. Right. And she she lived up to the hype. She was everything that I imagined. She was just as fine as she was in person as when I seen her on Instagram. And we just had a lot of fun. Like we went to painting with a twist, had some wine, was just kicking it. You know, it's my first time in, in Texas. So she just took me around and it was one of those things where we just had fun, totally enjoyed ourselves. It's just a memorable weekend. And from that day forward, her and I, we just started catching flights back and forth. She would come out to Arizona where, where I was. And then I, sometimes I'll come out to Texas and we'll find these prices that was cheap and everything was just in our favor, you know. And uh, I remember halfway through maybe like three months or four months into our relationship, um, because I asked her, I asked her to be my woman after like the after the first month. You know, after the first month, I was like, I just want you to be my woman because you just that dope. And uh, she just captivated me and she agreed. And we had certain terms like, you know, we're not going to be with anybody else. We're not kicking it with other people. Like, you got to get clarity on that. Like, yeah, you say we're in a relationship, but let's get some clarity. What does it say in fine print? And I think that's when people don't understand boundaries and they don't understand uh getting clarity on where they stand in these relationships because they were like i thought we was doing this it's like no you just fell into a relationship it doesn't mean that y'all were together it's just y'all start doing relationship stuff without actually the communication so it's like the miscommunication can really hurt people in the long run so um three months later i ended up proposing to her and i wanted her to marry me i remember I went to the mall one day and I was like, if I find the ring that she want, if it if it's what she want and, you know, the price is right, I'm getting it for. Her. I said, if it's not in the cards, it's not going to happen. I'm not going to force it. Seeing the ring for her. I was like, yeah, this is it right here. And um, <laughs> and then the funny thing is, I remember I proposed to her over Skype. And I remember talking to her and I showed her the ring and I asked her, would she marry me? Because I wasn't going to see her for at least another month and a half um, because of the flights and stuff like that. And I proposed to her over Skype and we still have the pictures to this day, which is funny. It's like she's crying, you know, it's just a funny picture. Maybe I'll show it to you all one day. And we went from there and people say, why would you marry somebody so fast? It's because she had 80% of everything that I was looking for in a woman. I mean, she was incredible. Like why put someone on the shelf when you just know that this is the right one. And, and of course that came with prayer and stuff like that and, and confirmation, because if she wasn't the right one, I wasn't going to do it. I wasn't just going to just marry anybody just to be doing it. But she just, she was a, a great woman. She was my biggest cheerleader. She was my biggest supporter. She was there for me when I was, going through my divorce where she was there for me. She just looked out for me, making sure that I was good. She was just totally committed to me. And I was just like, man, this woman is special. She's phenomenal. And I was giving her the things that she need as well, you know, covering her spiritually, making sure that we're great friends and being there for her, being consistent, being that covering for her. 
uh, and just loving her for who she is unconditionally. And those are just some of the things that made it really work for us. And I'm like, you know, why wait? And I wanted to prove to her that I'm serious about this, that we're going to make this thing work. I've learned a lot from going through my divorce. And that was something that she told me too. She said that she really appreciated that I didn't talk bad about my ex-wife. And she said that was a green light for her because she was like, you know, a lot of people, it's always somebody else's fault. But I told her, I said, this is where I screwed up at. These were my issues. And I, and I never talked bad about my ex-wife. I just kind of let my my wife now just see my ex-wife for who she is. I didn't have to try to throw her under the bus. <laughs> so my 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 wife now, she she saw you know, my ex-wife or who she is. And I didn't have to, I didn't have to do anything. So those are some of the things that show her too. Like he's a man of, of, of character, accountability, these certain things. And a lot of people, you know, friends and family, that was like, uh, you met somebody on social media, you met them on Instagram and y'all getting married six months later. That's kind of, uh, you know, and so everybody wasn't really for us at the beginning, but I knew, and this is one of the first times in my life at 40 years old that I made a major decision for myself. I didn't care what anybody say. I was going to ride or die this thing. If it didn't work, then I would have just took my L, but I was secure in this decision. I was like, I'm going to do this on my own because this is my life. And I believe that at 40 years old, this was kind of like my coming out party where I'm like, I don't care what people have to say about me anymore. I don't care about what church people got to say about me anymore. Any of those things, people are going to try to judge and criticize. I don't care. I'm going to live this life. And here we are almost five years later, uh, happily married. You know, we got some kids together. We was able to buy a brand new house. We got a brand new car. And, as, and those are physical things, but our marriage is still strong. Like we still are madly in love with each other. And she's just as beautiful as she is today as when we first met. But I would tell single people too, like the mental piece, if that's what you're into, I, she stimulated me mentally. And I mean, she re we read books together. We have Bible study together and we're doing this stuff on Skype. I would say one of the things with long distance relationships that's really beneficial is that we wasn't having sex, right? Because we had to get to know each other on a deeper level. It wasn't like we just met each other and just jumped in the bed. It was like, no, we need to know each other because it's, long, it's a long distance relationship. And that really benefited us. And I'm grateful for that. And I believe God orchestrated all that for the way it was supposed to work out. So eventually I end up, moving i left arizona um my lease was up and um i ended up relocating i moved to 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 texas and we started started fresh we had our house we was renting the house and everything was already set in place for us like we had the house uh everything my wife was just like hey just come out here and we gonna make it do what it do i mean and Everything just fell into place. I'm, and she, you know, and I always joke around and tell people that she is like, oh, when we first met, she was like, oh, I thought you was a pawpaw. She was like, because I just need you to change your wardrobe like you're looking 40, you know, of course, because she's older than me. I mean, younger than me. And she's like, uh, we got to switch that up. So she bought me a whole new wardrobe. She's like, you got to get rid of that old stuff. That stuff ain't going to work if we're going to be rocking together. And that's another thing. Are you willing to make some changes. And I don't look at it as her trying to be controlling. I think it was a blessing that I was really open to change because I was 40 and I was thinking like, dang, I was living in the whole time capsule because when I met her, it was just like, everything was fresh and new. I was like, wow, I was really missing out on life, <laughs> you know? So I got the whole new wardrobe. And of course, at first I was thinking like, oh, is she like, is she trying to change me, that whole thing? And I was just like, you know what? Let's just go with the process because living the way my old mindset didn't get me that far anyway. So I was like, let's try something new because having an old mindset, you can't open new, you can't open new doors with old keys. And I realized that. And I was like, let me see what she's talking about. And I, I trusted her in that process and everything worked out. And, you know, new wardrobe and, just everything, everything worked out. And I even remember just starting to get a job out here because when I got, I started working maybe two weeks, 
maybe two to three weeks after I moved here. Like I didn't even have a job, but we had money saved and stuff like that. Like we had a plan put in place for us to be successful and everything worked out. So I'm so grateful for that. But yeah, that's that's our story. And, and eventually I'm going to bring her on one day and we're going to both talk about some deeper things too about our relationship. And because uh, I know a lot of you are probably curious about her getting on camera and us talking about this as well. But I said, I'm going to do this because I want to be able to give someone some encouragement um, who's desiring to love again. So don't be afraid to love again if you've been through a divorce. My tagline is love fearlessly. Like if you're going to do this thing, you got to do it. And you got to be sure of yourself. And if you do make a mistake, that's okay. You fall down, you get back up. I mean, that's what we do in life in general, right? With anything else we want. So don't be afraid to love again because you putting your, you closing your heart is closing out anybody from getting in. So you might say all men are trash. Well, they're going to be all trash. Or you're going to think all women are trash. Well, if that's what you're putting out there, that's what you're going to get. So let's start renewing our mind and thinking different when it comes to if you really desire true love. Don't fall for what these people on social media be telling you. I mean, people, they'll tell you all this stuff and be laid up with somebody at the house while you're struggling. And they talking all that crap. So I would just tread lightly when it comes to that.